You would rather have a shadow cabinet position than be chair of the select committee if, if, if a shadow cabinet position was offered to you? Well, shadow cabinet positions are a matter for Jeremy, but I will, assuming that Labour is given the opportunity once again to chair the select committee, put my self forward for election by the House of Commons because I think there's a really important job of work that needs to be done, particularly in the circumstances, the um, shambles we now find ourselves in. Well, I was going to say, you've used the word shambles. Do you think it is odd that there's been a sort of ministerial changing of the guard at the Brexit department a week before, six days before negotiations? I think it's absolutely astonishing because those ministers have been working very hard, talking to lots of people, getting their head rounds, all of the issues. The more you look, the more you realise there is to negotiate. And less than a week before the negotiations begin, Half the team disappear, two new people arrive, they've got to read up at high speed. And I should think the European negotiators will think, what on earth are we dealing with here? And this is really bad for Britain, because what the election result has shown very clearly is the idea of leaving the EU with no deal is now dead and buried. And the, the big question is whether... Theresa May now understands that it is definitely Parliament but, that is going to decide the shape of the Brexit. Right, so, we to be see. clear, though, we've had a white paper which set out the UK government objectives. Are you saying that is dead or is that still alive? Does that represent the objectives? I can see the bit about no deal is better well, than the bad but deal. I think it's very important because only a couple of days ago, David Davis was still talking about being prepared to leave with no deal. Now, that would be catastrophic as we showed when he appeared before the Select Committee and he had to explain to us what the consequences of that would be. But look, I think in order to get effective scrutiny, the government's had to be pushed and prodded all the way to accept Parliament's role. I'd like to see the Select Committee having a stronger role in its work, uh, being able to uh, receive regular reports from ministers, to call debates in Parliament, to make it explicit that the committee is overseeing the negotiations on behalf of Parliament and not just the work of the Brexit Committee, but that uh, sounds, of the Department. But that sounds very modest because a lot of people, including, we understand, David Cameron in Poland this evening, are saying it might be a good idea to bring more parties and more people into this and to try and build a kind of a bigger parliamentary consensus around what kind of Brexit, what kind of Brexit we should have. William Hague uh, this morning. Now, that, that, would that be your committee or would that be a bigger thing? Would that I be think some kind there of commission are, or would it be something... There's a range of things that, that could be done. You could bring in business, unions and others in, a, in kind of recreation of NEDI that existed in the 60s and, and 70s to consult on yeah, the but process. That's a, that, that can't, that's, you can't have that... If it's, if it's too many people, you can't really expect them to be involved in the nitty-gritty. I've, I've just... Well, I mean, I, the point that I'm making is I think there's a number of different options, but right. in the end, Parliament has a committee whose job it is going to be to oversee that, but I also think it's going to have to lead to changes in policy. The negotiations with the DUP are taking place. One of the things the DUP is very clear about, as in all the parties in Northern Ireland, don't want to see a return right. to a hard border... And customs. Now, the government is taking a terrible risk, saying we want to be out of the customs union but sort of in. That isn't going to work. One step they could take is now to revisit that decision and say if you want a guarantee for British business, tariff and barrier free trade, which is what the government says it wants, and you want to avoid the problems in Northern Ireland, then we should stay in the customs stay union. Stay in the customs union. Forgo, by the way, with that, forgo the right to sign new trade deals independently with the US and India. Well, that is true, but the US but is already, as you know, Evan, our largest one. single yeah. trading market. Our trading goods with China has quadrupled look, over the last key decade. Question, key, key question. Staying in the customs union. When we have all these people saying we want a softer Brexit, vaguely expressed with no further clarification. Is that what it comes down to? Do you think, when we hear people say softer Brexit, is the debate inside the customs union or not? Is that where it, what it is? Well, I think that's the, the first and clearly sensible step to take. I don't understand why the government do, didn't do that in the first place. The second issue will be what kind of access we have to the single market. But thirdly, cooperation on things like foreign policy, defence security, the fight against terrorism. We've right. fought an election with two terrorist outrages here in the United Kingdom. And that continued cooperation is essential to our security as we leave the European Union. Look, I need to talk to you about Jeremy Corbyn. He's had a much better electoral success than you predicted and most of, uh, most of your colleagues on the Labour backbenches predicted. I'm sort of interested in where you are at the moment because, obviously, you thought he wouldn't do very well electorally, but you also didn't think he was very good. And I just wonder whether you still don't think he's very good. I mean, obviously, you will have had to review your position on whether he kind of can get the votes in, but... Do, have you changed your mind about him? Well, I think he fought a brilliant campaign which enthused a lot of people with 
a message of hope over the politics of fear, which is really what the Tories ran in the course of the campaign. And, look, there was a very cheerful meeting of the Parliamentary Labour Party this evening, in marked contrast to the last meeting before we left for the election, because... Lots of people, me included, the polls, you probably, got it wrong about Jeremy's capacity to do that. And that is a great achievement. Now, the task we have is to build on that because we need to broaden further but, but our support. his qualities as leader, I suppose, I mean, those haven't changed, have they? I mean, his, his appeal has changed, but has, or you've changed your view of that, I would imagine. Well, but he, what about his qualities as a leader? Well, I think the qualities he demonstrated during the campaign in the face of a lot of attacks, a very negative campaign from the Conservatives, a pretty hard time at the hands of the press. And Jeremy didn't rise to any of that, he didn't respond, he inspired people, he brought young people and others who hadn't voted before out. And we've got a lot of additional Labour MPs and it's a fantastic foundation to build on for the next election, which could come very soon indeed. Hilary Bent, thank you thank very you. much indeed.